It never fails in fantasy football, right? We're always out there looking for that rookie, that rookie running back that's going to take the league by storm and help carry our fantasy football team. We've had him in years past with Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Zeke Elliott, and a lot of others. But are there any out there here in 2019 that could possibly do the same thing? There's slim pickings, but there's a few names we need to pay attention to. What's up, Headliner Nation? This is Hunter Henry from the LA Chargers, and you're watching my boys here on the Fantasy Headliners. Let it flow, fellas. What's going on, Headliner Nation? Jake Fantasy Headliners back in North Carolina, no longer out in Arizona. And I'm looking forward to it because now the NFL draft is over, right? We already knew most of free agency was over. All the big names have been signed and moved. We know where they're at. But now, all the incoming rookies, we know where they are too. And we can really start putting together our plan for 2019 fantasy football. And it starts right here with rookie running backs, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Like I said in the opening, everybody's trying to find that Saquon Barkley, that Zeke Elliott, Leonard Fournette, Alvin Kamara... These highly productive rookies in the past that have helped carry your fantasy football team. Are there any of those guys out there here in 2019? It's possible, but we don't have that clear-cut guy. That guy that we absolutely know is going to do it, he's not out there. We're going to have to try to pay attention and take some late-round flyers. But there are some names out there with some sneaky high potential, and that's what we're going to be talking about here today. Real quick, before I get into that, uh, we're going to be giving away this signed autographed Juju Smith-Schuster jersey. There is a pinned tweet on my Twitter. If you do not follow me on Twitter, go do so because you will then have a chance to win this autographed jersey. There is a pinned tweet, like I said, on my Twitter, at Fantasy Headliners, F-N-T-S-Y Headliners. It gives you the directions of what you need to do in order to enter your name in the contest to win this jersey, which will be given away here shortly. Also, be sure to check out our website, thefantasyheadliners.com. If you prefer to read some articles at times maybe you're uh you know doing some business at home and you want to read some articles to pass the time well go check out the website lots of great information over there and our draft kit is also for sale there 1999 from now until the season starts i'm not about to be raising the prices all throughout the off season but that's it that's all my my homework that's all my to-do list that i have to do now let's talk about some rookie running backs here for 2019 all right, so let's get into this list. Let's talk some players. And if I give you any useful information, make sure you hit that thumbs up button because it really helps me out here on YouTube. First guy, no surprise, Josh Jacobs, running back out of Alabama, was picked 24th overall by the Oakland Raiders. And we kind of had an idea of this a few weeks back in some of our mock drafts here on this channel earlier in the year. We had Josh Jacobs going here to the Oakland Raiders. It just made sense with Marshawn Lynch talking retirement. And Doug Martin, uh, Doug Munner out of town. They had Jalen Richard, not really a three down back. This was the perfect opportunity. They did go out and they signed Isaiah Crowell. But if you've been paying attention to the news lately, Isaiah Crowell has torn his Achilles and is now out for the year. Another reason why I have Josh Jacobs right now as rookie running back number one. It looks like he could get a, you know, a solid opportunity come week one. Chris Warren is another name you need to pay attention to. He was really high uh, you know, in, in the coach's eyes last season before suffering a season-ending injury. He's definitely somebody to pay attention to. However, draft capital is a thing. They spent a first-round pick here on Josh Jacobs, and I expect him to get an opportunity. He didn't have this out-of-this-world, highly productive college career, but why? It wasn't really his backfield alone. I mean, he had another running back there in the backfield with him that was drafted by the Patriots and Damian Harris. However, in this split backfield, he still managed to get 900 total yards and 14 touchdowns in 2018. And like I said, draft capital and the opportunity is two of the most important things here in fantasy football to try to find these guys who are going to be instant hits. He's really going to get that opportunity now with Isaiah Crowell out of the mix. He's, we're going to see a lot more of him here in the offseason, leading up to the preseason, and then starting the regular season, if he can stay healthy, learn the playbook, Josh Jacobs could be starting running back for the Oakland Raiders come week one. Definitely something to pay attention to. Carr now has some weapons on the outside with Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams. You know, they're going to be putting more pieces together in Oakland. They're going to take a huge step forward this year. And those weapons on the outside are going to pull defenders out of the box, really hoping to make this running game, you know, you know, a sufficient running game. I mean, at times last year, they were a very solid running team. They just didn't have one solid back that stood out. Put all those numbers, combine them together, add it to Josh Jacobs' potential. We could be seeing the top fantasy rookie running back here with Josh Jacobs. 
All right, now we're going to head to the third round where there's a little bit of a run on running backs. A run on running backs that could have some sneaky fantasy football potential here. First one we're talking about, David Montgomery, the 10th pick of the third round going to the Chicago Bears. Now, at first glance, you're like, eh, I don't really know if I'm that excited about it. The guy came into the, the draft as one of the highest touted running backs in this class, and he's used to a huge workload. He's had over 250 carries in both 2017 and 2018. Over that time, he's averaged 1,400 yards and 12 touchdowns. Definitely a highly, highly productive college running back. And here's a little sneaky thing to remember. Chicago traded up to get him. Keep that in mind. When teams trade up, it's because they really want a player, and they don't think that he's going to be there by the time they pick again. If they trade up because they really want him, it's because they have plans for him. They can see him in their offense. They can see him as a great asset to the team. That's something to keep in mind because right now he went to Chicago, who really the only two running backs ahead of him are Tariq Cohen, which is pretty much solidified in that pass-catching type of role, who will see a handful of carries a game. But also, they did sign Mike Davis out of Seattle. Is Mike Davis something to really worry about when you're talking about the skill set of a David Montgomery? Not really. Mike Davis showed flashes at times uh, of, of being a decent running back when he was in Seattle, but for his career, has only averaged six carries a game. This is definitely not somebody with a proven you know, history that can go in there and be the starting running back, getting the early down work on a consistent basis for the Chicago Bears. David Montgomery is a name to really pay attention to. He's already been compared skill set wise to the likes of Kareem Hunt. And who took Kareem Hunt in the NFL draft? It was Andy Reid, Matt Nagy, and the Kansas City Chiefs. He sees this as his future Kareem Hunt. His early down workhorse could be David Montgomery, a very versatile back, capable of handling all three downs. And it really gives this offense another dimension, right? We knew that Jordan Howard wasn't the answer, and that's kind of why they shipped him out of town. But this could still be a very productive running game in Chicago. And David Montgomery could see the bulk of the carries, somewhere close to 175 to 200 carries this year if he can beat out Mike Davis here early in camp, which we all expect him to do that. Mike Davis is not some juggernaut, huge free agent signing. Let's be realistic here. David Montgomery has a huge chance, and he's somebody you need to pay attention to on draft day. You will not have to take him early in drafts. However, as you get to those mid to late rounds, depending on your league size, he's a name to pick up. He's a name to pay attention to because he could be some sneaky high value for you there in the later rounds. All right, now let's talk about a few guys that you guys may not be too familiar with, but you need to start paying attention to. First one, Daryl Henderson out of Memphis. You probably didn't hear a whole lot about him in college. Why? Because he played for Memphis, but we really need to pay attention to him. He was the sixth pick in the third round, and he is an absolute beast of a running back. And he just didn't get enough spotlight in college. However, in 2018, dude had 1,909 yards rushing and 22 touchdowns. And he did that on only 214 carries, which is still a lot. However, averaged 8.9 yards per carry. Yes, I get it. It's Memphis, but this guy is a Tevin Coleman-esque type running back that can really play all three downs. He's a huge beast of a running back that has 4-4 speed. A lot of people didn't give him enough credit in college because of the, the competition that he played against. However, he went to the Rams, and, and if you look at that from the outside, we already know we have issues, potential issues, with Todd Gurley. Does the arthritis in the knee keep him out of games? Does he, you know, miss a, a, a chunk of the season? Do they limit his workload to keep him healthy all throughout the season? Does Daryl Henderson assume the C.J. Anderson role from last year? That's entirely possible. Right now, his only competition is Malcolm Brown. I can totally see Daryl Henderson beating out Malcolm Brown, and they spent a third-round pick to get him. It's really all dependent on Todd Gurley and his health. However... The way things stand as of right now and all the question marks surrounding Gurley, Daryl Henderson is a sneaky value add late in drafts that could turn out to be huge for your fantasy football team. All right, let's talk about Alexander Madison, the dude who sounds like he's an ex-president or something. Maybe we should call him El Presidente from now on going forward. The dude is the 39th pick in the third round, and he's an absolute beast of a running back. 5'11", 221 pounds. And he is the definition of a workhorse running back. 
The guy did nothing but touch the ball. In, that sounded bad. He carried the ball a lot in college. He piled up 302 carries, 1,415 yards, and 17 touchdowns last year alone. He even had a game in which he carried the ball over 40 times. The guy is an absolute huge, huge workload, you know, ball carrying monster. Now, he went to Minnesota. And if you've watched this channel at all, you know that I'm a pretty big fan. I like Dalvin Cook. And the way that Dalvin Cook ended the season, if he can pick up the season this year, could be one of these guys that is an absolute steal on draft day. So why am I excited about Alexander Madison? Well, for all the Cook haters out there, it's probably because you know that he's suffered injuries in the past. He's missed 17 games the last two regular seasons alone. Hasn't been durable. And now there's no more Latavius Murray to take away carries. Does Alexander Madison assume that Latavius Murray role more than likely out of camp as long as he can pick up the playbook and work on his pass protection? However, they also addressed offensive line in the draft. Two of their first four picks in the draft were offensive linemen, including a first-rounder in Garrett Bradbury. He's somebody who should definitely solidify that offensive line, help to protect Kirk Cousins, open up holes in the running game, and if Dalvin Cook suffers any injuries, Alexander Madison is a name that you really, really want to know about. All right, Ryquel Armstead next up on the list, and more than likely when I said his name, this was your reaction. But he's somebody we really need to pay attention to here. Now, he was the second pick in the fifth round of the Jacksonville Jaguars, so he doesn't quite have that draft capital that you would really like to see from one of these running backs that's you know on the verge of breaking out. And last year, he dealt with a few nagging injuries in college. However, despite that, playing in only 10 games, still rushed for just under 1,100 yards and 13 touchdowns. He just fits this offense perfectly, though. 5'11", 220 pounds, a bruising runner that does not shy away from contact, but yet still has home run speed because he did time with a 4'4", unofficial 40 here this offseason. That type of power running with that type of speed Kind of reminds me of somebody else in Jacksonville, but I just can't think of it. Oh, it's his name. Oh, it's Leonard Fournette, the current starting running back of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, we know Fournette alone has suffered his own nagging injuries. He's had some off-field issues this offseason, none that really look to limit here going into the season. But we know that he's been at odds with that front office before in Jacksonville. It kind of just fits, right? Ryquel Armstead is kind of like the second... He's like Leonard Fournette light. He's like the diet version of Leonard Fournette. And he's kind of an insurance policy as of right now because that offense is built around the bruising style of Leonard Fournette. And who's left, you know, in front of him or excuse me, behind Leonard Fournette on the death chart? It's Alfred Blue and the often injured Thomas Rawls. Ryquel Armstead is somebody who could make a name for himself here early in the offseason. And if anything were to happen to Leonard Fournette, he could step into to one of the heaviest rushing attacks in the game with an improved offensive line because they also drafted Juwan Taylor uh, in the draft here in the second round, who was many people's you know top-rated offensive lineman in the draft. They got a steal there because of some injury concerns with him. However, to start the season, Juwan Taylor is really going to bolster that offensive line, giving this rushing attack just another dimension. Anything happens to Fournette, Ryquel Armstead, is definitely a name you're going to start hearing more about. All right, last guy I'm just going to mention here, and it's Miles Sanders. And I'm only doing that because I had him as my top-rated running back coming into the draft. He went in the second round, which is great, 21st overall there in the, in the second round. But he went to the Philadelphia e Why did Philadelphia take another running back? This is I don't want to say it's worst-case scenario, because for all you dynasty players, he's definitely still somebody who has huge upside now being in Philadelphia. But I really thought this kid could come into the league here and be a fantasy asset year one if he would have landed in the right situation. What is Philadelphia? Not the right situation because there's 64 running backs on the roster there already. They just signed Jordan Howard. They have Corey Clement. Wendell, don't tell me I have Smallwood. Josh Adams. There's just a lot to compete with right now in Philadelphia. Now, am I saying that he's not going to get a shot this year? No, he probably will. And I do think that he's Probably the best talent out of all the names I just listed. However, how far into the season is it going to take for him to get this chance? That's the problem, especially for all of us doing redraft fantasy football. Like I said, Dynasty still has huge value. However, here for 2019, 
I'm a little bit bummed out about the landing spot of one Miles Sanders. All right, so those are a few of my top rookie running backs here for 2019 fantasy football. Did I open your eyes to any of these names? Are these names that you were already paying attention to? Let me know down below in the comment section. I greatly appreciate the support, and I'm looking forward to some feedback. Let me know what you think of these guys. Are these going to be names that you're going to be following here in 2019? Maybe you went and watched some highlight reels after this video was over and you came back just to leave a comment. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that interaction. This is one of the most interactive channels on YouTube. If you leave a comment, we're going to respond to you. And it's not just going to be with a one or two word answer like other channels do. We actually like to communicate with the community here. It's a great community full of a ton of people who are looking just to enjoy football like we are. Greatly appreciate the support. Like I said, head over to the website, thefantasyheadliners.com. Lots of great articles and information over there. And then also head to my Twitter, at Fantasy Headliners, F-N-T-S-Y, and, and follow the steps to enter your name in for the free giveaway of the autographed Juju Smith-Schuster jersey. Looking forward to doing that here in the near future. Hopefully you guys have a great week. We'll talk to you later.